Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In our social sciences, it, especially sociology, today we will discuss a very significant topic which is conspicuously missing in our textbooks. Remember last time we discussed that uh, textbook generally starts with the last two centuries, but we need to look at the bigger picture. We looked at the last two millennia and there is about 800 to 1000 years where a civilization, the Muslim civilization, was creating knowledge and was thriving and making systems and developing uh, societies and cities and uh, learning centers. Thousands of scholars in every domain and thousands of inventions in every area of knowledge came up in that era. But quite to the contrary, our textbooks, which children are studying in O level, A level, uh, they just mentioned that uh, sociology as a subject or social sciences, uh, there was a period in Plato and Aristotle, uh, Greek period, that was the first period. And after that, as if uh, there was uh, nothing happening on the planet, and uh, the second period started uh, in the 16th century, which is a, a secular social thought. But what happened in between? This is not uh, uh, true to the social sciences. Our natural sciences books also have been written in the manner as if all of a sudden, after, after Socrates and Euclid, uh, Galileo came in and as if nothing was happening in between, which is obviously not true. Human knowledge and civilization, that is a continuum irrespective uh, of uh, whatever religion or perspective uh, the majority or the powerful uh, people belong to in that era. But it's a continuum and it, that's how human learns in gradually an incremental and uh, continuous way. Uh, let's uh, look at the glimpses of what sort of literature and what sort of work on the social sciences was being done, what was being discussed. That literature is talking about human civilization, it's talking about social ecology, the urban and rural uh, uh, contrasts and differences, the economics, how it works, the occupations and professions, and how geographical factors uh, have a role on the people's customs and behaviors, which, which otherwise uh, people used to think as if it was uh, just inherent, uh, like the Galen uh, thought that uh, Africans are used to uh, music because they are probably uh, intellectually have some problems. So on the other hand, uh, different systems like the system of justice, system of revenues and taxation, they were all being discussed and analyzed. Sociologists of that era talked about urbanization, tamaddun, the word is coming from Arabic as a social phenomenon. They talked about division of labor and specialization and they discussed how uh, nations rise and fall and how uh, when the nation thrive, the luxury uh, corrupts the character uh, and the religion of the people. They talked about cities, identified uh, uh, the contrast and differences between the primitive life, uh, which this is called Badwa in uh, Arabic, and the civilized life in contrast in the cities where the civilization actually thrives. And even they discussed the uh, attributes of a city in terms of size, density, heterogeneity, which a long way precedes uh, the, the modern or uh, uh, today's psychology, which is attributed only to Durkheim and Weber and few people. So th that precedes uh, Durkheim's social morphology and Louis Ward's idea of urbanism. If many hundreds of years, centuries before that, uh, these things were uh, written and uh, they give features of a successful city, what a successful city uh, uh, would look like with the location, air, clean air, transportation. Even these issues are relevant today. The other dimension that literature talks about is education, the knowledge, how learning was taking place, how it, uh, what's the process, how society learns, music as a form of expression, religion was acknowledged as one of the significant uh, uh, regulatory agency or in today's term, uh, the uh, uh, social control, etc. at an instrument for that. Scientific instructions became firmly rooted in the cities, colleges appeared, 
in cities like Cairo was a city of colleges, illiteracy disappeared from, at least in the Arab uh, uh, countries. Endowments, charities were in such a magnitude that people, uh, students and teachers were able to travel. Science of alchemy and medicine grew. So all these are deep uh, social changes and cultural changes and uh, a civilization uh, developing itself. And they went deep into uh, finding out the mechanisms, uh, what gives the sense of belonging to the people when they rise above the uh, streets and tribes and villages and go into the cities and make large armies and systems and uh, uh, structures of um, uh, social organizations. So asabiya is the word they used. And this asabiya is a very powerful word. Uh, all these words that you see on the screen, the group mind, the vitality, the party, conscious, uh, tribal consciousness, uh, these all are shades of the meaning uh, to the asabiya, but two very uh, uh, closest uh, kind of to the meaning are the speed core or the social solidarity. And then that literature describes how this social cell solidarity builds up or how uh, what are the factors which actually weaken it uh, with the passage of time uh, as the nation's pendulum goes uh, up and down. They also uh, described how nations and state transition from uh, from a uh, formative phase to they develop, uh, they develop in all sorts of things in learning and might and power and how then they gradually decline. So this sort of cyclical behavior is not was just limited to their study on the Arabs. They uh, studied Berbers, Persians, Jews, Assyrians, Greeks, Romans and Turks. Uh, this has also been done by our uh, last two centuries uh, uh, and psychologist Spengler, for example, the German historian in his uh, The Decline of the West or Tynbee in the study of history or uh, Gomplowicz, the famous uh, Polish uh, sociologist in the outline of sociality, they have done it. But uh, these things have been identified centuries uh, ago and uh, this cyclical nature of the things, but it's extremely deep, uh, the social and economic and uh, uh, urban and all those phenomena in the society which are happening and creating uh, this rise and fall were analyzed in the, in the historical and the social context, which is very significant part of the sociology missing in the textbooks. It goes deep to discuss how this sort of social changes are happening, what were the causes of decline, what weakens that asabiya, the social bonds, and what sort of social dialectic uh, is taking place in the society. And it, they acknowledge the social injustice, whenever it appears, it does not persist. Uh, Many of uh, earlier people uh, had not conceived this idea. This was the first time this was coming as a scientific uh, thought. And a very towering personality in all that was Ibn Khaldun. He was an ambassador, a minister, an author, a traveler, a civil servant, a teacher, and a historian. Obviously, he is acknowledged as the, uh, the father of analytical history. And he is the one who developed with all his empirical, observational and historical methods and compared the periods and compared against other scholars and extended and refined uh, the knowledge that existed and gave society as a subject matter of a new independent science. He named it Ilmul Umran, Al-Bashari. Al-Bashar means Bash human, the science of human civilization which is extremely significant. He's a, such a towering person. Uh, he has preceded everybody in, in, in this uh, subject uh, as a figure uh, of knowledge and um, uh, awareness to humanity. And there's no wonder that despite whatever the uh, Western or Orientalists think about it, they can't hide acknowledging it Look at the Gomplowicz, one of the founders of European sociology, Sorunkin, the American-Russian sociologist known for the social cycle theory, and many others. 
they acknowledge Ibn Khaldun as the founding father of sociology. The very fact which we said conspicuously our textbooks are missing out just to create a defeatist mentality in our children. Now look at the other side. Just few examples to quote. The short history of sociology by Mauss. It does not refer to any non-European in his chapter on antecedent of sociology. Right? Likewise, uh, most textbooks, they don't talk about in the, they say we are starting classical uh, uh, sociology, but they don't mention uh, Ibn Khuldun or uh, the contribution of Arabs in that. It's not just uh, limited to Islam. There was many other uh, civilizations which uh, was part of his uh, observational study and the study of the pattern that he discovered. Uh, the American Sociologi Sociological Association, uh, they uh, published a resource book for teaching sociological theory. Simply take it outside, no non-European thinker included, and even no woman thinker. So it's a sort of, uh, it doesn't make sense, but at least the, uh, we on our side have to uh, think it for ourselves, and they will not think for us. So uh, I would like to just finish this uh, session with Ibn Khuldun's uh, uh, very interesting saying, blindly following ancient customs and traditions does not mean that the dead are alive, but that the living are dead. I think it's good enough for us, us we still, uh, most of us mentally colonized people to wake up and become aware of our identity. Iqbal was also reminding us the same in his message, and that's the thought of today. Thank you very much.